Hello and welcome back to another video. In this problem, we're looking to find the domain of the function f of p is equal to the square root of 2 minus the square root of p. So when we're looking at the domain of the function, we start with all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. And we say, okay, in this particular function, which values can we restrict from that range? There's a couple ways this can happen. In this function in particular, the only way it's going to happen is if we are taking the square root of a negative number. So we look what's inside of the square root and say, okay, this has to be greater than or equal to zero. And we just have to be careful because there's two different square roots. So we have this one right here, the square root of p, which means that what's inside of it, p, has to be greater than or equal to zero. Next, we have this greater square root, the square root of two minus the square root of p, which means what's inside two minus the square root of p has to also be greater than or equal to zero. We can solve this, 2 minus the square root of p is greater than or equal to zero. Adding the square root of p to both sides, these cancel and we're left with 2 is greater than or equal to the square root of p. Squaring both sides, 2 squared is 4 is greater than or equal to the square root of p squared. The square root of anything squared is just itself. Which means that not only does p have to be greater than zero, it also has to be less than or equal to 4. What does this look in interval form? Well, p cannot be less than zero, so we start at zero. We do the hard bracket, actually, because we're including zero. It can go up to four, but then once we go beyond four, it's also invalid because it has to be less than or equal to four. So this or this are the two ways of just representing the function's domain, f of p, zero to four, inclusive. 